Uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Leonardo. Uh, up next, we have Gary Smith, and he's going to be talking how a dyslexia toolbox works and the future of dyslexic technologies. Thank you, Gary. This is on, isn't it? Is this on? Yeah. Right, okay, I couldn't hear myself very well. Right, the, the title, Moving Forwards in a Backwards World, we chose that title because I don't know many people, are, is there anyone here that's actually dyslexic themselves apart from this group, because I know these people. Is there anybody else? Is nobody else is dyslexic. This man here, this man there as well. You see, you get letters mixed up, so we call it back, backwards world, because I do it as well, E and I, especially E and I. You know, it's not going to happen for me, right? So we're trying to move forwards with this, so that's the title. And that's just the logo and the sponsor. Right, this is what we're going to talk about. We're going to introduce the team, because there was quite a few of us, who I am, the perception of dyslexia, my personal deception with it, and what it's like to actually live with it in a, in a professional sense and a personal sense. I will go through it all. Uh, introduction with, to dyslexia will be done by this lady here called Jackie Fisher, who's a dyslexia specialist, and she's very can give you very nice uh, in-depth and very picturesque, uh, very, you'll, you'll see, a very, very nice detailed one. Um, and we'll go into the app, how it works, future development, and, and diff different technologies that will be available that we're going to be working on. Okay, the team. Myself, I'm the CEO and founder of the, uh, the, the whole company Brain Book Limited. Gareth Cox, this is man here, director of operations. And you've got Ryan McDermott sat right next to him, the Scottish madman, uh, director of sales as well. Um, Jackie Fisher, as I said, dyslexic specialist. Um, David Fisher, where are you? Where are you? Webman. He's like web SEO marketing. Wow, specialist man. And they, he's in, he's got his own company called Mark Your Web. Alistair, who's that guy taking pictures all day, is a dyslexic guinea pig as well because he's like a very very ideal customer to us. Okay. All right. Who am I? Project manager for uh, OT Think Big. This was last year where I did a few workshops with, I think it was 23 children. We taught them guitar in, drum in, songwriting, all this in the course of three days, all for free. And I managed to do it with only 250 quid and spent about 100 pounds, completely very, very cheap. I, and the first um, music event I ever organized was when I was 16, which was in a local area, but didn't fall through because Health and safety didn't allow a 16-year-old to organize anything. Um, right. The, the idea came from campus party last year. It all came from last year when we was in Berlin, and I was on the phone to a friend of mine, and he was saying, for us dyslexic people, we don't really have much technology that's based on us. Rather, it's based on a generic term. It's not based as individual. We need to have something that's more individual that we can make our own. And I was like, yeah, OK, we can do that. Why not? So even though he didn't go that much deep into it, I was like, right, we need to know exactly what we want, and let's develop it. So we took that to Berlin. We developed it. In, well, we didn't really develop it there. We just kind of done an outline, which we'll, we'll see in a little while. And um, I need to go back a bit. Rockstar Youth. Rockstar Youth provided me with a, a lot of mentoring I've got a business mentor called uh, Chelsea Baker, and she's a very, very successful businesswoman who mentored me to get the business going, get registered, get everything done, marketing, there's loads and loads and loads of stuff done, and obviously startup loans, if anybody's heard of that, got me a lot of money to keep, to push things forward. Right, taking only a year to actually do this whole project from last August, last August, campus party, last August, till this year. We actually have done it, just we can't physically show you because the Apple enrollment thing won't work. So yay to Apple, right? And most importantly, I am dyslexic myself. You know, so I do, I do understand in, in a very professional sense, in a in a technology sense, and I do understand personally what it feels like. Right. <laughs> right. Phonological memory. This is my biggest problem. Short-term verbal memory, exactly. Right, I could have any one of you come to me and go, this is what I do, okay? Tell me again in an hour, I wouldn't have a clue what you've just said to me, all right? But physically show me how you do something, and I'll remember that for a long, long time. It's as simple as that, and that's pretty much it. 
No, that's not all of it, which Jackie will go on to a lot more than just phonological. Um, in school, in ed especially in any education, I had to drop out of university because uh, it always felt like there was a kind of barrier to actually get my work done. I could never really finish it. I remember doing a 3,000 word essay in about two hours because I was just fixated and just done it. It was completely wrong, but it was very, very difficult for me to do. So it, it, we need things to actually get us to be able to accomplish these things. And Ryan, you can actually speak to later, he's actually in university now having dyslexic help. And he's very good at reflecting on that sort of experience, which he does quite a lot. Right, my current workplace problem, so I work in, um, I work with autistic individuals as well, and with a very, very severe end. And that's how me, Alistair, Gareth, Ryan, this is how we all met. We all met in this one home. And each individual have each care plan, support plans, behavioral plans, all these psychologists, specialists, people come in and say, do it all this way. And how do they tell you? They write it down. So, <laughs> how am I supposed to know how to look after these people? By reading, apparently. Apparently, you've got to do it by reading. No, it just doesn't work. I need somebody to sit down with me and say, right, this is an example, or even role play it, or something like this. Future Home Care are sponsors of us here, so I'm not going to badmouth them or anything, so don't worry about that. Um, but they are good. They are very good. We are talk we're in talks of um, how we can develop it in a way that rather than just giving you a care plan and saying, right, read this, and this is how you look after somebody, or this is how you deal with these people, because these are very severe people. You need to know how to work with them. You can't just go, right, go work with them and read this. It's, it's the worst way to do it. So we're trying to do it through technology now, where we can teach people through when there's a new staff member coming in, we can have all sorts of different, um, how can you put it? Picture, picture, by, uh, like by picture by video, which is actually happening now with the local authority people. Right, coping strategies, right. One of the main fundamental things, not just dyslexic people, just any other day people, including you, everybody, right? What do we all do? We all walk away or run away from every single weakness that we have, any challenge we have. A lot of the times we just go, right, I'm not good at that, let's run away from it, right? You know, but challenge it. This is one of the things that I found challenging from the word from when I was about five, six years old. You know, I didn't know the alphabet until I was about 17. You know, very, very late, which is, kind of goes on to this next part. To learn the alphabet, I did, I did it every morning. Every morning, before I went to school, I did it every single morning. Still, after school, don't know it. In college, right, still doing it, still doing it, every afternoon. Finally, I've got it, but I still miss out the word L. It still happens, okay? Right. I won't go too far into the, the past of how I learned left and right. But I got my ear pierced, my left ear pierced, when I was about... 15, I think, it was kind of a fad then, you know. Oh, I'll piss my ears, why not? You know, everybody likes it right now. Have a diamond ding. Since I'd got that, the left ear, I knew my left ear was always pissed. I knew that way was left, and then that way was right. And now, it doesn't matter. I know that's left, that's right, because I'm just so used to it. And, and there's a little bit of hole there, you know. Right. And just, uh, just to reiterate, you need to, uh, especially dyslexic people like yourself, in any weaknesses that you have, try and... So my only advice to you is really challenge it, you know? Even if, even if you can't figure it out, ask somebody. Try and figure it out, or even ask Jackie later. Find a way of dealing with the issues rather than running away from it. Because I face troubles every single day, you know? I really, really face issues every single day. But you're not going to overcome something unless you go for it. It's as simple as that. Right. And this is Jackie Flisher here, this dyslexic specialist. Lovely woman. Yeah. That goes right, that goes left. So right goes forward. Right goes forward. Yes. Okay. Right. Put the bug up there. Right. Hello. Thank you for coming to listen to the Dyslexia, about the Dyslexia Toolbox. My name is Jackie Flisher. Um, I started up a company called Dyslexia is the Business because I realized that there are lots of dyslexic entrepreneurs out there who had ideas for businesses, but there were absolutely no help. Gary and I met through LinkedIn, and he told me a little bit about his app that he was making. And having had a lot of experience of working with dyslexic people in the workplace, 
I could see the great value of what Gary was doing. Uh, what I want to do is explain, because dyslexia is such a misunderstood, if you like, condition, I would like to explain some of the um, issues that dyslexics have and how actually the dyslexia toolbox is going to be so useful and so helpful to people. Lots of myths about dyslexia. Uh, that all dyslexics have problems with reading, writing, and spelling. No, they don't, not all of them. Uh, they are lazy and unintelligent and have low IQs. I have never met a, a unintelligent dyslexic. I've met lots of very unintelligent left brain people, but no unintelligent right brainers. Uh, they write their P's, B's, D's, and Q's the wrong way round. Some people do, some people don't. Not all dyslexics are the same. So what one person will struggle with, someone else won't. Uh, dyslexia isn't a disease and you can catch it. Sadly, there are people who actually think that is true. Uh, and dyslexia, my favorite, dyslexics are learning disabled. We do not have, dyslexics are not learning disabled. We have a learning disabled education system that does not teach dyslexics in the way they learn. They are not. Lots of things with dyslexia. Yes, you can have people who I consider to be reading dyslexics who might have some problems with reading fluently. I have very few clients who can't read at all. I have lots of clients who don't read with meaning, and that's an entirely different thing. And I'll go on to explain why that happens. Uh, so getting thoughts down on paper be very difficult. Again, I'll, I'll, I'll go into that. Uh, you can have dyslexics who have auditory processing problems. So again, they have big problems with listening, distinguishing sounds, comprehending words that they hear. Uh, you can have dyscalculia, which is actually being dyslexic in maths. Uh, lots of people who are dyscalculic are actually sometimes very good readers. But if you think about maths, maths actually has a, low, a language of its own. Uh, dyspraxia is the clumsy form. People tend to not know left, right. They walk into things, they fall over things. Uh, dysgraphia is difficulty with handwriting. Now, dysgraphia and dyspraxia usually go together because it's all about motor control. So what dyslexia really is? It is not a learning disability. It is just a different way of thinking and learning. That's and seeing the world. That's all it is. Dyslexics are 3D picture thinkers who do not think with the sound of words. There's a gentleman here who's, who's nodding and smiling away here. Um, but, but they turn their words into pictures, into images. Um, they're excellent problem solvers very good at seeing similarities, differences with things, but they can experience thought as a reality, and that's called disorientation, and I will come on to that in a bit and expand on that a little bit. So what can be the benefits of disorientation? Um, anybody ever heard of Nikola, a chap called Nikola Tesla? Yeah? He's the guy who actually invented the AC power system. He used to work with Thomas Edison. He had the ability, remembering that disorientation is to be able to experience thought as being real. When he actually went on to design any of his uh, machines, he would actually build them in his head. And he would run them in his head. And he would see what was work, what was going to wear away, so when he actually actually came to build his machines for real, his, all his prototype machines actually worked perfectly first time. Uh, GCHQ have at last cottoned on to the fact that actually dyslexics make very good code breakers, something I've actually known for years. Again, they see similarities, differences, they see shapes. That's what makes them very good code breakers. Um, I had a because I do a lot of work with Thames Valley Police, with the uh, dyslexic police students, I had a chap who was in the army and who could actually look at a ordnance survey map and he could actually build the hills out of the contours on a, a map. That again is something that the British Army is taking quite seriously. 
because if you think you're in the SAS and I've just dropped you for a covert operation, you can know exactly where you are. Uh, they are bigger picture thinkers and they think and perceive multi-dimensionally and that means using all the senses. Um, I spend a lot of my time trying to get employers and dyslexics themselves actually to have a totally different perspective on themselves, to recognize the unique gifts and talents that they've got. I would give my right arm to be a 3D thinker. I'm never going to be, sadly, but I would love to be. But if we got employees to look at things their employees can do, rather than what they can, can't do, and actually use those gifts and talents, like GCHQ and other people are doing to best effect. We get this so wrong. Okay, so a little bit more about disorientation. We all disorientate. We've all had times where we've taken ourselves off in our mind and we've lost track of time. Dyslexics actually take that to a whole new level. That is why they are able to build, if you like, uh, from the map, the hills. That's why they can crack codes. That's why dyslexics are very good at 3D Fern plaque furniture, they don't need to read the instructions, they just do it because they can actually see in their mind what the finished article is going to look like. I have lots of clients who can take engines apart and put them back together, no problem at all, but probably can't read. If you have a big trigger on disorientation and reading, some people can't actually physically read because things move about for them. Words might move off pages, they might go into swirls, all of these sorts of things. Uh, that's very often where the reversing letters come from, because if you're a 3D thinker, you can view anything from either any angle. If you go home and try writing a P, B and a P on a piece of paper, and you turn that piece of paper around, then that B becomes a D and the P becomes a Q. That's when you know you've got a 3D thinker. Um, but they also use it, disorientation, in order to overcome confusions. So I take my, I've hit a trigger in a word or something, so I take myself off out in my mind to try and resolve that confusion. That works wonderfully on 3D objects like the cat, because you can do that. A cat is a 3D object. It doesn't work on the word cat, because words are 2D objects, they lay flat on the ground. If words stood up in books, dyslexics probably wouldn't have too much problems. Oh, hang on, gone too far. Right, would you all help me with a little bit of an activity here? Yes? Yes, yes. bit louder. Would you all help me with an activity here? Yes. yes, good. I want everybody, so this is mind, I want you to use your imaginations. I would like you all to think in your imagination of an elephant. Get a picture of an elephant. Yeah? Everybody got an elephant? Who's got a grey elephant? Anybody got a grey elephant? Anybody got any pink elephants? Yeah, one there. Anybody got any other colour elephants or cartoon? Yeah, lady, uh, gentleman up there. Okay, let's get rid of the elephant. Can we have a waterfall? Can anybody hear their waterfall? Yeah? Can anybody s sort of smell that ozone-y things? Yeah, okay, let's get rid of the waterfall. Can we have a pile of books? Are they hardbacks or paperbacks? Who's got hardbacks? Okay, who's got paperbacks? Okay, let's get rid of that. Gonna have a now, this is the serial killer question coming next. All right. Pile of paper, tidy or untidy? Who's got untidy? Oh, got loads of serial killers in. Okay. Right. Going to give you a, a word next, and I want you to get a picture for it. The. Who's got a picture for the? The. Anybody got T-H-E? Okay. They got anything else other than T-H-E? They got a, a picture? What about A? Anybody got a picture for A? Or if? Those are actually the little words, the high frequency words, are all words that for dyslexics are called trigger words. And if you are a picture thinker, 
and you don't think with the sound of words, let's go to the next slide and I will introduce this. So if I'm trying to read something, a paragraph, but I don't use the sound of words, I turn my words into images, then the little bit on the end there is probably okay because that probably says elephant and I've got a picture for an elephant, but I hit a the or one of the trigger words that doesn't have a picture, so I get a blank. But I probably recognize the word this side because I have a picture for it, so I push on. But then I hit another blank, and that goes all the way along. And as I said, dyslexics are bigger picture thinkers. So what I'm trying to do when we read is get a bigger picture for the sense of what I've read. If my picture's got blanks in it, then that isn't a lovely big picture, and it doesn't make sense. So it's very similar. If I had, you imagine I had a sentence underneath there, but I grayed out all the trigger words, and then I ask you to read that sentence, it doesn't actually make sense. That is what's going on, and that's why people don't read for pleasure, because that's not pleasurable, and that's why people don't read for meaning. As I said, a lot of my students can single word read very well, but they don't read for meaning, because that's what's going on there. This is what a dyslexic would see with the word elephant, this is what a non-dyslexic would see. They would just purely do the words. They don't need to do the sound with it. So pitch, how then does that impact, picture thinking, then impact on getting thoughts down on paper? I was having a chat with a young man earlier on who was saying that I can see very clearly what I want to say, but it's getting those thoughts down on paper. Basically, if you are a picture thinker, that's gone a bit grainy, that. But a picture gives you all the information you need. Everything is contained in there. I do not need words to tell me what's going on in that picture. If I don't need words, and I don't need to sequence. The only time you have to sequence is when you write or read. Basically, when you're writing, because if you get your words out of sequence, then what you've written doesn't make sense. It might make sense to you, but it doesn't make sense to anybody else. So what are sequential things? Well, obviously writing. Alphabet is a sequence. Months of the year. Times tables. Left and right. Directions. You need to go there, turn left, turn right, whatever. It's also direction. And also date and time is, again, is a sequence. So why is the dyslexia tool what's going to help? Why I absolutely loved Gary's app when I first heard about it was the fact it was so simple. Dyslexics are always very good at doing complex things, very often, like the code breaking, like all that sort of thing. But very often, they find the very simple stuff hard to do. With Gary's app, it will actually leave people to be lead independent lives. They can be in control. Anybody here who is dyslexic will know what I say when you are taken out of your comfort zone. You will know exactly what I mean in that way. Um, we all suffer from stress, but stress for a dyslexic is 500% worse. This is a little bit of a brain, and when a dyslexic will go get stressed, they go into what we call reptilian or lizard brain. It's a bit of the brain that's evolved with us, as we've evolved as humans. As humans, we have the neocortex, which is the intelligent bit here. The reptilian brain is there purely to keep the body alive. So if I feel I'm threatened, I either have to run away or I have to fight someone. Obviously, in today's world, you can't go around punching people in the nose, and it's not really done to run away from things. But the reptilian doesn't, brain doesn't know the difference be between eaten by a saber-toothed tiger or someone making me stand up and read out loud, something that dyslexics absolutely help hate. So they tend to go into the reptilian brain. Gary's app with the features it got will help people not to do that. I'm a great fan of technology and dyslexia. I've seen what it's done for people. I've had students who've passed degrees because they've been given assistive technology. I had a chap who would never even go out in his car 
because he was always afraid that he was going to get lost or there'd be an accident or he'd come across a detour. Because, but when he got a sat-nav, then that took all the strain and all the stress away. So I'm a great fan of, of technology. Um, Gary's app will then, again, with the disorientation, you can actually turn that off by using a colored overlay. Gary's app, you will be able, he will tell you more about that, but you will actually be able to photograph something, put your overlay over the front and be able to read it. Okay? He's going to have things in there about the alphabet, the date, months of the year. So again, all that information is going to be there for people. He's going to have a dictionary, because again, for dyslexics, it's very important that they have a meaning of a word. We have lots of words. If you say them, the two twos and twos, if you're not reading for meaning, then you don't know the context at which I'm uh, using that in. Um, so that's going to be a very good um, thing there. Right, I'm going to hand back over to Gary. Obviously, this is a huge subject. I've only got 10 minutes. If you want to come and talk to me afterwards, please do. I'm quite happy to talk to you, but I'm going to hand back to Gary now. Okay. It's still on. It is on, yeah. It is on. Right. <laughs> right. Developed, this is why it did take quite a lot of work. I mean, Ryan was there last year when we really trying to develop it and not in just um, a theoretical way. We were trying to make it in a very dyslexic way, funny enough. So we, we developed it in, in the most dyslexic way that we could. And you will see in a minute like exactly how we did it. Um, but there's a lot to look at. It is modeled around individual needs rather than dyslexia as a whole, which is, as I did say earlier, we would like to be as individual as possible. So when you use it, it's going to be a bit more t for you rather than just for every dyslexic person. Right. Yeah, there's only four features for this, version, for, for this particular version. It's not going to be something massive just yet. This is only stage one. It's going to take quite a while to actually gain some traction and get, them all, get all 14 features by next year. Uh, it's a lot of, it, honestly, it's a hell of a lot of work. We've done four features in a year, so you can imagine how much work we're going to have to do to get 14, right? And we understand and bring real world experiences. Like I was talking earlier about different coping strategies I had or the way that I grew up, or just like as you probably had when you were younger, difficulties that we had. And this is what the whole, this is why I love my team is because we're all dyslexic, you know? So we can all be, given our own input, how we, how we perceive something, how we've dealt with something. All that sort of input is like valuable. I don't care whether you, if I meet, come up after this and talk to 10 different dyslexic people, they, they could change the whole pro the product itself, just turn it on its head because they've given me some other way of looking at it. You know, it's, I need to speak to more dyslexic people like us because we can, because we just know what's going on. Right, as I said earlier, the progression, this is a very quick one. Campus Party, we used Balsamic software, which some of these people here will actually know what that is. But you'll see a picture, it's, it's actually quite basic. It doesn't make it actually stand out or anything. It's kind of like a wireframe to sort of show you how it works. Um, the funding, Rockstar Youth Startup, sources developers from a company called Imondi. They developed it for us in a bit more in-depth version. Uh, business networking, any business people here, if you come talk to me after, I'll, I can put you through to different business events to go to to meet the particular people you want for your particular sector. Uh, I've met a lot of people in the last year that have put me through. To, this is how I'm here today. It's because I'm networked. And networked like this just every single day, emails, whatever. Um, and the current future development, we'll talk about that in a minute. Right. As you can see, the progression, right? Last year, this year. Yeah? Very, very basic. I mean, if you were to use something like that, mm hmm. All right, and this is this year, okay? That's just the start. That's the, uh, the actual main menu, which will all make sense in a minute when I go on to the actual features themselves. And that's the, uh, the color chooser, which will, will change next year. Just a basic color wheel that you normally see on Microsoft Word or any other sort of programs that you choose color on. Um, the input and export text, that's the old one. That's the new one. And now we actually go on to the actual thing itself. OK. So say if somebody was blue, I'd be very, very surprised if somebody with dark blue color that was reading with it. This is how it would look. This is the default color, which is black when you download it. 
This is the default, that's the blue. Main menu, okay, right, let's move on. Now this is just a setup. When you, when you download it, you need to set it up to make it, make it your own. So is, who was dyslexic here? It's actually, do, you, do you have a color at all? Any color you use, what color do you use? Like a light green, okay. So what I want you to do, all the blue ones, just imagine it's all light green for me, okay? And you can tell me in the bit, like at the end or something, if you think it will work for you. If it won't, tell me why, yeah? So we can talk at the end. Okay, so you choose that color that's supposed to aid you in the reading and writing, you choose the light green, right? You choose a particular font that you prefer. These are the only three because Apple aren't easy to get fonts with. They're very difficult. I mean, there is a font out there that I'll talk about later that's like the golden child. It's like the amazing font ever. Um, do you know these three fonts at all? Which one would you choose? Just pick one at random if you want. Yeah? So you choose for Dano as well. I actually would go with that as well, funny enough. Okay. Now, the best thing to do is to test it with the alphabet, which I will show you as well. Okay? Not everybody will need to use this side of it, but why not? If you want to make it fancy in a particular color because you're a girl, maybe pink, you know? Whatever. Do whatever you want. All right. Color. So you, sir, would be probably top left. Top left green, right? Maybe a bit, bit, a lot in more. But that's not as easy as it looks, to be honest, is it? This will be, it's going to be into a primary and secondary color to make it more simplified. This is just the first version. And then you go into the font with the color and the background, yeah? So just imagine it's light green and you'll get it. That's in trebuchet at the moment, but you will get it in the particular font that you want when you uh, set it all up. Right, and then to say, well, well done. Right, this is the input and output text. You see on the different colors as well. This is actually somebody, this is the developer messing around with it. Putting the text in and trying to put the text in there as well. At the top is the dictionary. So if you can't read something that you just put in there you, or you, you don't know what it means, you just put it in the top and it will come up with a dictionary, which will be a pictionary in the future, which I will talk about. And then it just, you click send or the copy. Copy is just copy and, copy and paste. Copy the clipboard means copy. So you copy, paste. And send text, you'll get this menu. So you can send it via, SMS, it'll go into text. So you actually know what you've actually written and you can actually read what you've written as well. Email as well and Facebook and Twitter, you can export it all to these different platforms. Very, very simple. Honestly, it's as simple as anything. Um, as an example, as soon as you go on to um, click Twitter, it, will just, it can only do tweet and Facebook posts and status at the moment because we don't really have the permission to go into um, Facebook messaging, so if I wanted to message Jackie, I can't really do that until I've got permission from Facebook to say yes, which is very frustrating to get all these permissions done. But you need to prove yourself before you can do anything. Okay, and that's an example of the, the, the email menu. When you've exported it to the email, this is what you will see. It will just come out of the text that you've written. Obviously, if you were to type like that, then there's something wrong with you. I mean, that's no words there. Right. Now, this is the camera overlay. This is, the, this is a, the one that Jackie mentioned earlier. This is more, probably that will help you the most, I think. I think this one will help you the most. A lot, of, especially a lot of kids, I mean, a lot of people have um, a camera overlay, well, not the camera overlay, a paper overlay like that, A4 size, like, like Alistair, green, aren't you? Isn't it green, right? So when he was younger, he would have a green A4 overlay to put over the paper to read it. Um, Self-consciousness. I know, I know from personal experience, I know from Alistair, I know we, we don't really like to carry this around and exploit it and go, right, here's my color, people. I can't read for shit. Right, you know, I'm just lazy. Everybody knows. And everybody, because people's perception of dyslexia is very negative and very like, oh, they're definitely stupid, I mean, because they can't read. You know, we all know what it feels like, right? So A4, it's not really portable because you don't want to crease it around. You don't want to, it's just not portable. It's not convenient, okay? But, it helps. I mean, it really helps. So we just turn it into that. That's only purple, of course, but obviously for Alistair, it would be, uh, it'll be a, a light greeny color. But this is just a basic form of it. This is going to be something much, much bigger. As you can, it's quite simple. Picture tells all the story, OK? Right. This is the resources, left and right. Is it? Are you good with left and right? Are you okay with left and right? I'm still a bit with it. My driving is terrible. Don't get in a car with me, all right? Unless you want to die. 
I don't care. If I die, I die. You know, whatever. I'm only joking, all right? <laughs> I won't kill you. OK. Right, so left and right, just to make sure that you know where you're going. Um, but that, yet again, will go on to how it's going to develop into better stuff. Date formats. Uh, like the American version, my birthday, 24th of the 8th, 1990, right? In America, it would be 08, 08, 24, 1990, right? Yeah, there's no point even talking about it. Info. That confuses the hell out of me, like, why? You know, very, very frustrating. But that will go through and different, um, show you the difference between them all. It will do it by country as well, hopefully. It will. It, it will. Right, alphabets we'll talk about, and the fonts which I have shown you, but they are all in this menu. All right? There's the date formats. At the moment, they're like this. As you can see, that's the American one. That's the one I hate. This is why I'm showing this one. This is the one I hate the most. Okay? That's the American version. We're, where are we? We're, we're the one just above. Yeah? We, what we're going to do with that, we're going to turn it into um, and do it by country. Because when I look at that, I'm just like, yeah, they don't mean anything to me. Okay, so we said to the developer, right, we need to make this more simplified. Let's do it through country. So give it about a month. We'll have that all done by country. Say if you're going on holiday to Ukraine, you're like, I wonder what the date format in Ukraine is, because you may have to write a letter to somebody in Ukraine. And you kind of you want to be a bit more personal with them. So you just go, right, go into it, Ukraine, or come up with the date format in Ukraine, which I don't even know what that is, so don't ask me. And that's the months of the year. As simple as that, sequencing events, as we have talked about, January. To December, which is quite simple for many people, but for me, not necessarily. I don't even know what the numbers are. Trying to, I know January because that's number one. That's about it. But looking at that, I can tell. I can just do it in order and count down. But we'll develop that further as well. The alphabets, okay? Very rare that would somebody have that sort of dark blue. But this is you can choose between the upper and the lower. And I really suggest people when they do choose the font and the color to go onto this and choose between the upper and the lower and change the color around, go back into it to see what it looks like with these two particular letters. What you also find with this, and I, I hope Ryan doesn't uh, you allow me to actually use this story of him, um, really, really bad story they had. Uh, the canvas party last year, we, we flew um, Ryan out to come, come over, of course. We're not going to leave him out and back. So he come over, and at the airport, they said, right, your fly is so that F, he's like, oh, crap. I don't know my alphabet. You know, how do I get to F? I don't even know. He did say how he got there, but I think he had to ask like loads of people. He said, you shouldn't need to do that. You should be able to go, right, I know where to go now. You know, what, what's wrong with that? So now, you just go, right, F. Simple. And this is just an example of the text again. Right. Future stuff. To get more fonts, that's going to be very difficult to get on iOS. If anybody knows Apple very well, they're very strict. I mean, extremely strict. I'm, very, I'm struggling quite a lot just to get the app on the App Store, let alone get more fonts. I mean, they are very, very, very difficult. Um, the golden font for dyslexic people is Open Dyslexic. It was built in the USA, and that is a link to it. If anybody is dyslexic here and has a or a friend or somebody that is dyslexic, that is the perfect font for them. The open dyslexia one, okay? The augmented reality. The camera overlay will, will turn into, um, imagine, imagine you've got a poster on the wall and you can't read it. There's no, the color's all odd, you can't, the font's all odd and I want to change it to a certain font, a certain color that I want. So I just hold the phone up or the iPad or whatever device I got and it will transform the whole poster, yeah? We've already developed this, and we've already sort of kind of tested it. It's, quite, it's very fun. You know, it's like, woo, it's different. You know, it's really good. It's really, really cool. Uh, that's just the augmented reality in a nutshell. It does a lot more than just change font and colors. It, it won't do around the border. It won't, like, say it was on a brick wall. It won't change the wall. It will just change that inten intended uh, object that you actually want to change. OK, the comprehensive calendar. Uh, how can you put this into words? This is more. Right, in maths, when you look at sums, we're like, I'm quite difficult with, with sums, but obviously I'm not that bad that I can't do two plus two. It's five, I think, All right? <laughs> obviously it's four. Okay, so we're gonna be doing it in words. So when you wanna find a word, 
or if you're doing maths homework, you can actually type it in words and it will tell you the answer. So you can actually write a, a sum in a whole sentence and it will just pick up the key words. Very, very simple. It's actually very simple to do, very, very easy to do. Um, memory challenger, spend the words. As Jackie was saying, we, we tend to represent words as meanings. We can't really get a word unless there's an actual meaning behind it. So we, we're looking at doing a memory challenger, so once a week you'll be a dyslexic person we get given a word and say the same time next week and you'll be told what is the meaning of this word or what is this word, what does it mean? Um, for example, God, it can, it can be, literally be absolute entry. It could be even a country. You know, the meaning is, it is a country. It doesn't mean you know that. So you get challenged every single week with a different word. If you get it right, you're fine, you move on to the next word. But that all, that all as I said earlier, the uh, fundamental thing that happened, helped me in my life was to uh, really challenge myself to, to deal with the weaknesses that I had in order to move forward. Hence the title of it in the first place. So we, that's what we're basing it on. It, it, you'll see a lot more next year, but yeah, it's going to be fun. Right. Generic updates and features. There isn't many actual bugs on there at the moment because all they do is test it every day. So we'd be doing generic updates, updating like the months of the year, putting the numbers next to it, the date formats by country. Um, that's actually it for the generic update. Uh, the Pictionary. So words, so you have a dictionary and a Pictionary side by side. So you've got a meaning of a word and a picture to represent it. So instead of learning a word, so right, the English teacher going, right, this is definitely what that means. I still don't know what it means. You know, you're just never going to really get it. So it gives you a picture. So you actually learn it by an image and a meaning. So you actually, you will always remember that word a lot, lot better. It's, it's, it's very hard to explain without kind of showing. I wish I could actually show you it properly developed now, but it's not as easy as that. The left and right driver mode. This is for me when I actually passed my test. It's taken me three years already. Um, so I can have my iPhone if it's going to be an iPhone, on my windscreen, and it will constantly have left that way, right that way. So I don't even have to ask people when I'm with, right, uh, which way is left and right? I know, I know now. You know, I don't have to rely on anybody anymore. Okay. And obviously expanding platforms, because we don't have to assume that everybody's on Apple or, or on Android or on Windows or BlackBerry, or even the new Firefox, which I did speak to them Monday, which looks very, very cool. Um, so yeah, we'll be expanding on loads of different things. Summary. So this is, we're doing quite well here. So we'll just summarize what we've uh, talked about today. I know we have gone probably quite quick. Um, personal background and dyslexia, we've kind of covered uh, what it's like for me and how I came about this sort of stuff. Um, dyslexia in detail, obviously, from Jackie. Uh, progression over the year how Dyslexic Toolbox works and why it will work for Dyslexics. I mean, there is any person here that can really challenge us and really say to us, what about this? Then tell us, you know. We like a challenge. It's, it's good fun. Doesn't mean, no, I mean, this is a challenge. It's the first time we've ever presented anywhere, you know. So this isn't exactly something I find necessarily, oh, yeah, I've done this loads of times. This is very, very difficult to uh, apprehend for the first time, okay. Okay, and future development near and far, and what we're going to do. Okay, a call to action. Right, if anybody wants to uh, follow us on Twitter, it's Brainbook Limited, and that's my Twitter tag, Gary Martin Smith. Facebook us, just to search it, it'd be a lot easier. I couldn't, didn't want to put in too many links on here, it just makes it look a bit overdone on the slide. Let dyslexic people know about it, or better yet, ask them to actually contact us and say to them. Right, we have this problem and you haven't covered it. And then we'll invite them down, we'll try and work with them to actually come up with a technological way of dealing with whatever issue it is. You know, I could go on all day with all these lists of ideas that we have in order to build these apps more. But like, this is just one. I mean, some of the stuff that we want to do is going to be quite big part of the, the, the apps. It's going to be, may have to even branch into separate apps for one feature because they're going to be quite big programs. We're trying to minimize them. This is why it's very difficult to develop. This is not something that we can just go right, da, 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 it's done, because we have to make it a bit more mobile friendly because not everybody can use 500 megabytes or whatever in one app. So yeah, 
questions and answers if we can. <laughs> Depends on the question. So yeah, there you go. Is there any questions, anybody? That's good. <laughs> All right, that's it. Boosh. Uh, hello. Um, in, in terms of your fonts that you use, have you got the option of a serif font? Because certainly one of my friends I know, they've talked recently, oh, sans, uh, Comic Sans is one that's being pushed. Yeah. She says that that doesn't help her at all, that what she always found more useful was something like a Times font that's got serifs because you can actually tell the difference between, say, a D and a B because of the way the serifs are placed. Yeah, um, as see a lot of my stuff I've learned from Jackie. <laughs> She's like my golden learner thing person here. Okay, the non-serif, I believe, isn't it? Nothing serif will actually help really. But the honestly, if you write down the open dyslexic one, the reason why they can tell the difference between each letter is because they make the certain letter heavy. So if it's a D, they make the bottom of the D heavier. So it will, will say that that's the bottom letter. So you won't get the D and the P the wrong way around. And the P be obviously heavier at the top yeah that obviously makes sense to you doesn't it so right honestly write that one down that is a very very good font on android and um blackberry and the other ones we'll be able to use that font it's only ios ios is a very very i wish i chose i'm going to be very honest here i wish i actually chose another uh, platform because ios are very restrictive and i'm trying to tell them look why can't we use more fonts and they're saying well because apple only we only do this and this do this and that they're very strict and not very helpful so personally, I probably would have, should have gone uh, Android, and I'll openly say that to you. You know, otherwise we would be able to give more because we could give a lot more with Android. It's so open source. So hopefully that answers your question, really. Yeah. Okay. Is that it? Yeah. Oh, thank God. <laughs>